Jackson? Here. Austin? Here. Misho? Here. Witham? Here. Girding? Here. Cameron? Here. Messier? Here. Chair recognizes Councilor Gibson, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Brings us to agenda item number three, which is the recognition of indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This place is taking place on Nadi, this meeting is taking place on Nadi Kana, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homelands of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge with honor, with gratitude, the land, waterways, living beings, and the Abenaki, the people who have stewarded Nadi Kana throughout the generations. Brings us to agenda item number four, which is public hearings, which is scheduled for this evening. This evening, we have a public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant update on building upgrades to Summersworth Housing Authority properties. Anyone wishing to speak in favor or against the Community Development Block Grant, please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Good evening and welcome. If you don't mind, if you could just touch the back of the microphone, there's a button that'll make front. it. Front. How about the front? Is that better? Well, yeah, way better. Okay, it's Deb. Make our TV right. operator a lot that. happier too. Good evening, everyone. Deborah Evans, Summersworth Housing Authority. Thanks for having us tonight. Are we open? You are good. Okay, so I have to read to you. You know how CDBG can be. First of all, informational documents are available on that table and that table. And community development block grant funds are available to municipalities through the New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority. Up to $500,000 annually is available for economic development projects, up to $500,000 for housing projects, up to $500,000 for public facility projects, up to $350,000 in emergency funds, up to $25,000 per planning study grant. All projects must directly benefit a majority of low and moderate income persons. The public hearing will update the public on and receive comments on the progress of the Summersworth Housing Authority's properties at Albert ne Nadio? Nadu, Nadu <laughs> Homes, Bartlett Ave and Verona Street, Philly and Terrace, Washington Street, and Charpenter Car Apartments at 28 Franklin Street. That's 169 units in total. The project's been ongoing since March 21. It's received its last certificate of occupancy in July for the remaining completed buildings. So there's 34 buildings in all, again, 169 units. The major rehabilitation included replacement of appliances, flooring, cabinetry, wiring, plumbing, windows, doors, insulation, and siding. The CDBG funded doors and windows. All original residents have moved back into their units. Approximately 50 applicants, applicants were taken off the waiting list to move into their new home. Remaining work items are landscaping, community room upgrades, and office upgrades. Final construction is any time now. The total project was about $17 million. CDBG was 500000 Any questions? Can't ask any questions. It's a public hearing. Mm -hmm. so. But we'll listen to you. <laughs> well, I, I just want to, first of all, hope everyone got their invitation for the appreciation event that the Housing Authority is uh, putting on at Philly and Terrace on Wednesday the 27th from 2 to 4. Um, be a few speakers, and then I'm proud to... Yeah, but if you can speak into the sorry. mic, they just can't. Thank proud you. to um, invite people to go around and tour a couple of completed apartments. That is, um, I love to show the apartments off. They're, they're gorgeous. Uh, people that have moved back into them are very happy with their new surroundings, their new home. And again, as Donna said, taking 50 people off the waiting list is huge for us. And um, so we have... Uh, new people here in the community. Uh, everyone's fitting in well and loving their apartments. So please, if you can make it to the event, we would love to have you. Again, the 27th, two to four o'clock, and on a, just a tour of a couple of finished apartments on Washington Street. And, and, and the Housing Authority thanks you for sponsoring the CDBG. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you for signing off way back a couple of years ago when we approached you to put in for the application because as we all know it needs to run through a municipality and we thank you for voting in its favor. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in favor or against the Community Development Block Grant? Anyone else wish to speak in favor or against the Community Development Block Grant? 
Now being so, I'll close the public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant brings us to agenda item number five, which is comments by visitors. The Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinion and views at the City Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. The Speaker shall not enter into any debate with any person, the Mayor, Council members, city manager, or department heads. At this time, we welcome comments by visitors. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ray Bauer, um, three year resident of Somersworth. Um, I'd say I moved here out of respect for the mayor and, and the work that the city council has done. My wife and I kind of had options about where to live in Stratford County. Uh, but we were just so proud of everything that you all did in Summersworth that uh, we elected to uh, move here. I, I simply want to just take one minute. Uh, recently, unfortunately, um, I've been nominated as a witness in a particularly difficult case and had reason uh, to be concerned about my safety. Reached out, contacted um, one of your officers, uh, Megan Telly. Uh, and I just want to tell you what an outstanding representative she is of your city. Talked to the chief, um, congratulated him on a tremendous hire. Um, me to an extent, my wife to a great extent. Uh, she's made us feel secure in our home. Um, and I just want to congratulate the city council and the chief uh, for that hire. She's a wonderful officer. Just a small example of something that has nothing to do with me. A couple of our neighborhood kids were selling lemonade. She stopped uh, with a new officer that was with her, bought lemonade, gave them extra money that she had in her pocket. Um, and she's just been wonderful at representing uh, your city. And you should be proud of her. Um, thank you. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? None being so, they'll move us on to agenda item number six, which is the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion on the consent calendar. Councilor Austin. I'll move that we adopt the consent calendar as presented. Councilor Austin moves the consent calendar be adopted as presented, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the consent calendar is adopted. Without objection from council, I will move to other B, which is a vote to authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with the city of Dover, city of Rochester, and Stratford County to operate an emergency warming center at 30 Willand Drive in Summersworth from November 2023 through March 2024 to include an agreement with a third party organization to provide services at the warming center and to authorize funding in the amount of 20,000 that will need to be amended to 15 now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which should make council a little bit happy. It's gone down five uh, since this afternoon. So without, uh, without objection, we will move to that. Without objection from council, I will also uh, obtain a motion to suspend council rules so that we can have uh, the chair of the Stratford County Commissioners, uh, George McGlaris, address us. Councilor Austin moves that city council rules be so far suspended, seconded by Councilor uh, Pepin. Question before the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and city council rules are so far as suspended. Mr. Chairman, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor and members of the council. And I want to thank you all very much for hosting uh, the warming center here in the city of Summersworth. Uh, the county, uh, as a result of working with the mayors and city managers and the welfare directors, and uh, want to continue to operate uh, Willow Road as we, as we try to continue this three-legged stool approach that you all are very familiar with, with trying to build a new nursing home. Once we get a new nursing home constructed, we would use the old nursing home for transitional housing to help with the homeless population that uh, we are experiencing a, an increase in here in Stratford County, un unfortunately. But it's because of the city of Summersworth and, the, and your support uh, that's making this uh, a much easier process for us all in this region. Uh, we tried to uh, obtain uh, more state funding this year, just to let you know, uh, and uh, we were, were denied f through a, a very, very, let's just say, just, let's just call it a, uh, 
a failed process on behalf of the state. They said, the state told us we only had five homeless people in Stratford County. <laughs> we serviced 191 people last year at the warming shelter. And I hate to say this, but what other counties and regions did was that they handed out backpacks in, to folks in Walmart parking lots and they were able to count them as being homeless. We did the right thing and sheltered them during cold weather, real cold weather, life-threatening weather. And as a result of that, they considered them sheltered, which is insane. But they are promising, through the work with Mayor Callahan and Rochester uh, and the governor's office, they're promising us next year that that won't be the case and that we should be receiving somewhere between $140,000 and $160,000. So when that occurs, uh, we will reduce the cost to all the municipalities, uh, especially the three cities. So this ask of you tonight is for 20000 Now, last year you didn't pay anything. You did a bunch of great in-kind services. But we've had to raise Dover's as a result of just simply operating the shelter. Just to operate it, no changes, based on what the city of Summersworth asked us last year. There are absolutely no changes to that. Uh, however, in working with our third party vendor, there are certain things that we need to do that we had discussed with the administration during last winter, for instance, being open on days when we have blizzards because we don't want to release those people while we're having a blizzard during the day. So with those adjustments to the budget, we're asking the Summersworth to uh, uh, come up with $15,000. The initial request was going to be for twenty. I had spoke to Mayor Hilliard about that. But I worked on having the county kick in uh, a little more money uh, for small towns. Uh, and I had, we had some money left over from a federal grant that I was able to use. So we're only asking you folks for $15,000 this evening. The city of Dover is going to kick in $70,000. City of Rochester is going to put in $70,000. The county is going to put in ten, dollars and we're going to get $55,000 from the state. And the balance, of course, the $15,000 would come at this point from the city of Summersworth. I want to thank your first responding responder team. And, and all, one, one other thing I need to make mention to you as well. Uh, we in, insisted upon any foods that were that were bought for these folks uh, were, were bought from summers with vendors, summers with restaurants. So that's a, another boost here. So even though you're kicking in 15000 we're going to be spending that money if for any of the food requirements uh, with restaurants from the city of Summersworth. So let me just report to you quickly, if I can, on the process, because you all had told us last year that you were willing to let us allow you a willing to allow the county to continue to host this thing on behalf of all the municipalities. I think people need to realize that this is not a county function. We're doing this at the request of the mayors and the city managers. Uh, but one of the things that I think is important to point out is that we are moving forward with a new nursing home proposal. We've had to relocate its site for a number of regulatory reasons where we thought we were first going to locate it. We're out there now doing borings, and, and, and we're going to be reporting back to the county delegation on that, uh, that progress in September. So it's not like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, but it is two or three years away. Now, there are other activities that are going on in the county where we are making affordable housing available, uh, and, and there are a number of projects. There are so many of them, I don't want to bore you with them all, but it's, it's vitally important. Uh, and you folks stand as a hallmark, actually, uh, in this process because you've allowed us to continue to host the, the uh, facility here. The cooperation we've got from your first responders, whether it's the police department or the fire department, has been outstanding. We've uh, made some money available as well to reimburse the city of Summers for some of those, uh, some of those instances that occur that aren't usually that are outside of outside of a normal particular operation at the city of Summersworth would have to. So there's money in that budget. I forwarded it to the mayor earlier, late this afternoon, because I was trying to get your costs down. I'm trying to get everybody's costs down, actually. Uh, and hopefully next year, if, if, if all holds true, we'll be able to reduce that back down to zero for, for Summersworth next year based on the promises that we've been given by the state. Now, I don't have to tell you how the state operates. Uh, but they are telling us that next year they're going to straighten out this formula because it's insane to think that we only have five homeless in Stratford County. It makes, they even recognize that 
themselves. It's insane, when, especially when we served 191. And, and one other really quick point, if I may, Your Honor, I'm taking way too much of your time. But I want you all to realize that the biggest increase we're going to see, we had a NERAP program here, and that was a program that was started by the Biden administration to give rental assistance to folks who were uh, through uh, unemployment and all of the COVID-related issues uh, couldn't pay their rent. Well, we had hundreds of people in Stratford County. That program went away in June. So we're expecting a, a slight bump in the number of displaced folks we have or housing unstable folks that we have. And we've tr we tried with this proposed budget to address uh, those issues. Uh, but it, the sad part about it is, is that most of those people that we're seeing are elderly that are being displaced. And we have a long waiting list in our housing authorities, not over here in Summersworth, but in Dover, we've got a five-year waiting list for them. Uh, and uh, that's the part about this that's really a crime, in my, in, in my opinion, is that as, as a result of the loss of the NERAP program, the rental assistance program, that we have elderly now who I've had 12 visit me at my business in Dover in the last month, uh, living in their cars in their 70s uh, and 80s. It's, it's not right. It's just not right. We've got to do more in that area, and the county is working with the mayors to try to develop public and private partnerships uh, that we can do in our region to at least assist those folks for sure because that's, it's sad to have our, uh, us have elderly in that, in that situation. It's just not, it's not a good thing. So we've tried to do that with this budget. So this is why we have this request to you. We normally wouldn't have done that, but we're, we're going to try to... We're going to try to house some of them in hotels, keep your local welfare costs down if someone shows up. You're not going to deny somebody who's 75 years old a hotel room if they've been evicted from their home as a result of market forces in our housing problem, which is, which is, as you all know, I don't have to tell you, you folks know it, you live it every day like I do, uh, the market forces that are, that are working their way through our region. It's a statewide problem. And I'm just very disappointed in the state where they would only say that we had five homeless. It makes no sense. Uh, but they're pro as I said, they promised us next year that they would, they would change that. So I've said enough. This is a, is, a, is a minor request of you folks. I want to thank again your chiefs from the police department and fire department. The, the, your, your staffs have been outstanding uh, in working over there. And I just hope that you folks will uh, see you where clear to help with us. And Dover has already committed the additional 20,000. Rochester's committed the additional 20,000. And I'm only asking you folks for, for 15. So, and the county's going to make up the balance. Questions so from council. Any questions from council? None being so. Thank okay. You, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And thank you all. And thank you very much for doing what you're doing for those folks. Question for the council is a vote to authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with the city of Dover, city of Rochester, in Stratford County to operate an emergency cold weather warming center at 30 Willand Drive. In addition to that, to allocate, and again, we will need an amendment for that, to allocate $15,000. Councilor Witham. Yeah, a couple of comments, and thank you uh, to the uh, commissioner for the, for the kind words about our city staff, and thank you, Mr. Bauer, for your kind words uh, about Officer Tully. Uh, we have fine folks that, that, that work in our public safety departments, and they don't always get recognized, so it's nice to have it uh, here tonight. With regard to the, 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 the warming shelter on Willand Drive, you know, it's, 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 it's a bit of a story, isn't it, right? Um, and the first thing that comes to mind with me is no good deed goes unpunished, right? So you do the right thing, and now we have five homeless, right? It, it, it's, it's a bit bothersome, right? Uh, I've heard of new math, but that's real new math, right? Um, you know, when this all started, you know, we got wind that the city of Dover had purchased the old uh, Taekwondo studio on, on Willand Drive. Oh, it's going to be a, a, a warming center. And uh, the first year, you kind of swallowed your, 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 your concerns and you just went with it. And then, you know, we, we, we found our way through the pandemic and there were struggles with that. And uh, throughout all of that, under a, a different uh, third-party vendor operating it, 
Uh, we, we had a lot of demand for our public safety services. We were, I think, generally as a council, I don't want to speak for all of us, but I think many of us spoke at many meetings about the high volume of calls, night after night, multiple calls every night, oftentimes putting our services out of service. It was troublesome, right? But then we, 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 <coughs> we took a step back and we looked at how things were being done and we went back to sort of the model of only opening for those super cold nights and now maybe modifying a little bit so people aren't leaving during a blizzard. That makes all the sense in the world. And I, I know collectively we all made many comments last year as we went through the, the season about how well run it was. It wasn't as taxing on our public safety as it once was. It made all the difference in the world of coming back to a place to support this effort. Coupled with that was the three-legged stool that the commissioner mentioned and uh, the idea of building a new nursing home and the state support for that and then taking the other nursing home and making it for transitional housing. Before that, we just had a cold weather emergency shelter, we, we, which kept people from dying, and that's super important, right? Job one. But we didn't have a plan sort of out of it, right? And I don't know if you ever get out of this problem, but we can make it a heck of a lot better. And we now have a plan. It's been a bit like a roller coaster. Yeah, we like it. No, we don't like it. Yeah, we like it. And when I heard that the state wasn't supporting it, and uh, I, I got mad again, right? And I'm like, well, what? if they can't support it, I can't, I, my, my emotions have run the gamut on this issue. But we're in a real good place right now. The demand on our services isn't, once, isn't what it once was. Uh, in fact, in this year's uh, budget, we allocated $10,000 towards this effort, seeing, you know, kind of, reading the crystal ball a little bit, uh, the extra 5,000, even if it was 10, uh, I can clearly get there because we're in a much better place. We've learned as we've traveled this road together and we're in a much better place. So I'm in full support of uh, the additional allocation and the extension of the agreement, which is what's in front of us right now. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote to authorize or a question for the council is a vote to authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with the city of Dover, city of Rochester, and Stratford County to operate an emergency cold warming center at 30 Willand Drive and an allocation, correct, there is $10,000 already within the budget. Um, so the allocation, and correct me if I'm wrong, city, Mr. Uh, manager, will just be $5,000. So we will need an amendment just for an allocation of $5,000. Further discussion, Councilor Austin. Thank you. Um, I want to just add on to Councilor Witham's comments um, if anybody's got any heartburn over that extra $5,000 that's not budgeted, think about all of the items that we talk about spending money for that are on things and for, for what some people would consider luxury items. Or, or We're talking about an additional $5,000 for people who really need it. So I would hope that there's not a lot of heartburn on this council for the money that's being asked for in addition to the services that we provide. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. The question for the Council is a vote to authorize the City Manager to enter into an agreement with the City of Dover, the City of Rochester, and Stratford County to operate an emergency cold warming weather center at 30 Willand Drive. Further discussion? None being so, I will first attain the amendment to amend this. Councilor Witham. Make a motion to amend the additional requested amount from, uh, yeah, requested amount to uh, $15,000, which is an additional 5000 over what is budgeted uh, in the FY24 budget. Councilor Witham moves that the amount of $20,000 be amended to $15,000, seconded by Councilor Austin. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. Question for the Council is a vote to authorize the City Manager to enter into an agreement with the City of Dover, the City of Rochester, and Stratford County to operate an emergency cold weather warming center at 30 Willand Drive and an allocation of $15,000. Further discussion? None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the city manager is authorized. Brings. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to wake up at one point. Yeah, glad to see you're back, Councillor Witham. Moves us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by the <laughs> 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 I just had you on your mind for moving that. That's it. I know you'll get me back. You always do. <laughs> Moves us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by counselors. Any comments by counselors this evening? 
That doesn't mean you can comment later either. Okay, <laughs> moves us on to agenda item, item number eight, which is communications. We have no communications to share this evening. Brings us on to agenda item number nine, which is presentations of petitions. We have none to present this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 10, which is the mayor's report. Honorable members of the council, I submit to you the mayor's report for Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. Summersworth's commitment to continue to stand by its foundational strength, its citizens and rich diversity will continue. This evening I am announcing how the city will be acquiring a billboard on West High Street to help promote the message of the Hilltopper spirit, safety and our community and our commitment to diversity. This evening I'm empowering the Mayor's Commission on Cultural Ethnicity and the Arts to create a design in the final and finalize the message. The deadline is in, in about two weeks, so Matt, you will have to get a jump on it pretty quickly. I am confident that the final product will not only represent the strength of our Hilltopper values, but continue to add pride to the great community we live in. Together, inch by inch, we will continue to come closer to fulfilling our creed of creating a community, state, and nation where all will be celebrated, honored, and protected. There have been several inquiries made regarding the development of the formal National Guard property over the last few weeks to the city manager's office. This evening I am forwarding the inquiries to the Economic Development Committee to further vet them and to see if they align with our overarching goals of this council for the property. When the committee has completed its work, I will request that the proposals that align be forwarded back to council for full discussion and directions on next steps. Proud past, Summersworth now has made the map as a destination for those who are not only too committed to preserving and celebrating history, but are also part of the recreation of visiting historical markers throughout the state. I'm actually part of that geek club. There's a book that uh, aligns all where the markers are throughout the state, and I've been able to uh, get up to about uh, 65 so far. If you are looking for something fun to do, I highly encourage you to purchase the book. I have no stock in that book, by the way. Please join me on September 13th at 5.30 to unveil the historical marker celebrating the site of the first public, public school slash high school in the state, the Hilltop, uh, Hilltop property. We will then travel to Forest Glade, we're at Forest Glade Cemetery, where at 6 p.m., the second marker celebrating the national and statewide recognized uniqueness of the cemetery design will be unveiled. The mayor's office has also been finalizing all details and has submitted um, for designs to several of the 10 city historical markers which have been approved by this council. It is my hope that over time, as more items are identified for their historical significance, that the more markers will be approved by future bodies. Under nomination appointments and elections, under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following is being brought forward this evening for a confirmation vote. Amy LaBelle for reappointment as the Ward 3 Supervisor to the checklist with a term to expire in 2028. Also in the nomination appointments and elections, the following is being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Alyssa v uh, Allison Vesser for appointment as a member to the Cemetery Board of Trustees with a term to expire in 2028. I would request that council uh, consider waiving uh, council rules to make this appointment this evening. In accordance with council rule 17, the nominations will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. Finally, under nomination appointments and elections, in accordance with the city charter and council rules, the following mayoral appointments are being named. These are members to the Community Power Committee. Councilor David Witham and Nancy Cameron, unless uh, Nancy want to swap out with Matt Girding, he has, you do. Then I will be rescind Nancy and instead Matt Girding, thank you very much, you are in. And uh, business owner Timothy Bassam, as the business owner representing this, other uh, appointments will be moved forward as uh, individuals who are interested in serving this uh, have come forward and um, requested that they be part of this committee. This respectfully concludes my September 5th, 2023 Mayor's Report. Brings us on to reports of standing committees. We'll start with the Chair of the Finance Committee, Councilor Witham. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, report to the public and members of the Council that Finance Committee met last Wednesday. Uh, we had a number of items on our agenda. I'll try to be brief here. Um, first item on our agenda was a supplemental appropriation request by the school department. Uh, that was not acted on at the meeting as the school department has not yet finalized uh, that request. Uh, more to come on that. Next agenda item that we took up was an assistance to firefighters grant uh, for technical rescue equipment. Uh, Fire Chief Kramerlinger uh, had uh, applied for this grant and was awarded the grant. 
I would note the committee uh, called out the fire chief for his successful efforts in a number of grant opportunities uh, over the year. Uh, this particular grant for rescue equipment, ropes and confined space equipment, things of that nature, uh, has a city match of $2,381. Uh, the federal share of the grant is $47,619. Uh, and the committee uh, supports uh, reception of the grant in its entirety. Um, and again, thank you to the chief and members of the department for facilitating that grant. Next item on our agenda was the city's investment policy. On an annual basis, we are required to uh, renew the city's investment policy. Uh, you should have a copy of that is, is an action item under other uh, this evening. Uh, there are no changes to the investment policy. It remains the same as it has been. Uh, Finance Director Smith did go over a couple of highlights of the investment policy and answered a few questions for committee members. Uh, I think more out of curiosity than anything else. So it's kind of a, a housekeeping matter, if you will. <clears throat> Next item on our agenda was the Willan Pond Trail Bridge Repair or Replacement Project. Uh, to Councillor Austin's point, uh, this is one of those extras uh, that uh, is going to potentially cost us some money. Uh, the Public Works and Environment Committee and the Finance Committee both support a long-term fix to this problem, which is replacement of the wooden structures with uh, an aluminum dock-style structure uh, for these bridges. One is 112 feet long, the other is 80 feet long. I was surprised by their length, quite frankly. Uh, the total price tag for replacement of these bridges with an aluminum dock-style uh, bridge is $57,520. Uh, the Finance Committee supports moving forward with this. That includes uh, removal of the old docks by the vendor, the old bridges by the vendor. We did have a brief discussion about public works staff uh, doing the dismantling of the old bridges. Uh, that would save us about $14,000, but it would tie up the better part of our crew for more than two weeks. And uh, we're too lean in preparation for winter. We didn't think that that was an appropriate use of resources. Um, so we'll look for action on that item uh, in coming meetings. Uh, next item uh, that we took up was uh, replacement of a zero turn lawnmower for the highway division. Although we do contract out mowing of our city parks and our cemetery, uh, there are a lot of other ancillary spaces, properties that we take over. A good example right now is the National Guard Armory uh, with maybe a couple of acres of grass there to mow all the traffic islands and a few other pocket parks, if you will. Uh, the zero turn mower that they have is over 20 years old and it has died. It's had two engine replacements. It has uh, gone through its useful life. Public Works did look at a number of uh, different alternatives and got quotes on a number of different alternatives. Um, where this was not a budgeted item, uh, the committee felt it was in our best interest to uh, look at the lowest bid which was from Patriot Tractor, again, a local business, which we thought was uh, good as well, uh, to purchase a uh, bad boy rebel zero turn 61 inch mower. Uh, that was within the Finance Committee spending authority at just over, just under $13,000. Uh, so I believe the PO has been cut for that already. Get the play on words, cut for that. So there you go. Uh, that's all I have for tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> The next item we have uh, on our agenda was the wastewater treatment plant upgrade. Uh, I think as council knows full well, we've spent millions of dollars at the wastewater treatment plant. This is part of a phased uh, uh, improvement at the wastewater treatment plant modernization. Uh, the next phase uh, uh, is in the queue for engineering uh, to get the uh, plans uh, drawn up and ready to go out to bid. Uh, in the budget is about $450,000 for this work. The discussion at the Finance Committee was whether or not we wanted to sole source this to Wright Pierce. They are the engineer of record for all of our work at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, the prior studies. It is considered a professional service uh, and the committee felt there was no need to uh, veer away from Wright Pierce. They have the institutional knowledge. Uh, they're already up to speed on the plant. We've been very happy with their work and where it is professional services, uh, the Finance Committee recommends just sole sourcing it to them and not bidding out uh, that body of work. Uh, uh, 
uh, Finance Director Smith provided uh, a quick update on reporting more with regard to the budget that we just closed out and uh, that we're going to finish in the black and we have uh, more anticipated revenue than we thought. Uh, and we talked about that. Obviously, that will go into the, the general fund. Um, and the only miscellaneous item we discussed was the uh, Hamilton Street uh, water tank uh, standpipe, if you will. Uh, I think as council knows, we're moving forward with a more expedited uh, replacement of that tank. Uh, we had some concerns about the roof structure. Uh, to replace the roof, which is a fiberglass roof, was more money than we wanted to spend on a tank that we're ultimately going to replace. We did get a good report, though, from uh, a number of consultants that have looked at it, and it, it is not in a state of any failure. Uh, uh, the, the brackets that were identified as rusting were um, not integral to the roof, uh, so we've uh, staved off any alarm there. Uh, it has bought us some time, but we're going to still move forward with uh, getting the uh, engineering and all of that in the queue so that we can ultimately move towards replacement of that water tank. So uh, initial stages of all that conversation, but uh, at least for the time being, there's no initial money that we have to spend on a Band-Aid, if you will, uh, for the roof of the water tank. So. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Moves us to Government Operations Chair, Councillor Mishu. No report this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Economic Development Chair, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. We have not met, but I would ask the members to be open to having a meeting sooner rather than later based on the Mayor's assignment tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just blame me. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Brings us to Public Safety Chair, Councillor Pepin. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I did have a public safety meeting on August 30th at 4 p.m. here at the Council Chambers. Uh, first thing was on the agenda was approving the minutes that passed unanimously. Uh, Chief Kremlin of the Fire Department gave us a, a report of basically of the fire rest, technical fire rescue tools that he was putting in for the grant for and all the uh, equipment that was going to be affiliated with it. One thing I'd like to mention that, um, is that this is kind of time sensitive, so we're going to ask for a second reading tonight, uh, simply because it, the, the answer has to be in by September 11th, so we're going to ask for a second reading on that to, if the council is willing. Um, we did, on the second thing that we talked about was the fire station completion of the fire station. Everything was pretty much on track. The, the punch list is being gone through. There's still a few things that are being worked out, hydro seating of the of the, the front yard, um, lighting control system, HAV control systems, and the radio radio systems are still being worked on. Uh, it's, it's balancing all the all the things and making everything sure that everything is functioning in the right way. Um, second thing that we brought up was uh, the red glow lights. Um, this was brought up on the building committee uh, several times afterwards after the design was into the station is that looking at the police department they have nice blue lights basically outside uh, kind of distinguishing the entrance of, of the police station and we thought it would be kind of nice to have the same thing in the fire station with red saying fire onto it so it would they, that people would know if you look at the station there's several front doors into, into the building several doors this would kind of like bring it out that it would be the main entrance of the station uh, so that was kind of like an add-on. Um, the chief is still working on that. He's kind of like figures that we can possibly do it and the location of it is, is questioning of some change of lighting or whatever for the main entrance. So, um, so that was discussed. Um, next thing that we did open up on was the fire station open house. We scheduled that for September 27th at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if, I hope that all the councilors can, can attend and also all the citizens of Summers will be able to attend. Uh, it's a beautiful station, not just outside but inside. Uh, it's to protect the firefighters, it's to protect the families of the firefighters, and it's also to protect the families, uh, especially in decon. There is a lot of things inside that station that is, that is beyond uh, a lot of the departments have, uh, and we ought to be very, very proud of it, and I hope that people are able to show. The reason why we're putting it, this is on a Wednesday night, September 27th. Uh, we were planning on doing it in October, on uh, Fire Prevention Week. Uh, as the chief gave us some information, is that uh, Fire Prevention Week is that way. He would like to probably try to get some stuff out of the state fire marshal's office, which 
It's a waiting list if you're trying to do it during Fire Prevention Week, and it's not very easy to get a hold of. So we decided on doing it on a, on a Wednesday evening. Um, so that is set. Um, Police Department update report. Uh, the chief was at the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Council meeting, so he was unable to attend, so the city manager <laughs> took over the show, as far as that was concerned. Um, the first thing that was brought up was staffing for a sergeant's position. Uh, as it stands right now is that um, sometimes there's a shortage of a sergeant being on duty, so they're looking to put on another sergeant's position to kind of fill into the gaps that are, that are there. Uh, the committee voted three uh, unanimously to support the the staffing position of the sergeant's position being put in place. Um, the body program, uh, body cam program, was supposed to be started on eight seven. I believe it's already started. I see the chief has it on him already, so um, it, that's that's already up in operation. Um, as far as staffing, we have five <laughs> openings. We have two five. Uh, two police officers in the fire academy. We have two on field training, which they should be off. They were supposed to be off the end of August. So they're somewhere near being out on the streets. And we have one certified uh, police officer being waiting to be hired. It was just going through a background check. So hopefully, I, I think that's probably done now by now or whatever, it's very close. Um, <coughs> so I just lost in my notes here. Um, Take your time. Right. Uh, sergeant's position, promotions. Sergeant Lefebvre is uh, promoted to master police officer. Collins DeShane, DeShane as, as a new sergeant, which I think is being sworn in Thursday. Thursday here at City Council, so, so if anybody's free in the City Council to show up, it would be appreciated. Um, School resource officer Scott South has been was a police officer, a patrol officer. He has gone in as a resource officer. Uh, Detective Fuller is, is tagging along, which is part of the program that she has to oversee him for a few weeks. Uh, so he is in there. And that's all I have for the police department. EMS updates. Um, <coughs> basically, they in July they had 132 calls. The response time average was four minutes. Four minutes, eight seconds. Uh, staffing is down to about two people, but they said they've been able to manage it. Paul said that they're doing okay with that. They have uh, two new ambulances that are waiting to be put online. Uh, they're being striped. <coughs> they should be all striped by now. Uh, what's waiting for them to come online is radios. As we know, radios are getting very tough to get. <laughs> We're going through that with the police department. Mm -hmm. They're going through that at, at AM. Uh, at Stuart Ambulance Service. And that's my end of my report. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Public Works and the Environment. Councillor Witham. No report. Thank you, Councillor. And rounding up brings us to Recreation. Councillor Cameron. No report tonight, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to agenda item number 12, which is reports of special committees. Any reports of special committees? Councillor Pepin and then Austin. I'll make my way around. Your mic. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Bernier Street is having a subdivision. Basically, it's two different driveways and two different two different locations, which we're going to supply two houses. They are driveways. Uh, we accepted Goldenrod for one, and Corso as a sec Corso Drive as a second uh, second driveway. Uh, they're going to be marked private on the end of the streets, which. Um, that would be it. So that's what we, you have a resolution that's coming out for us first reading tonight. Also had another meeting right after this uh, on August 20, 23rd at 1 p.m. at the police department again. Um, this one here is, um, is off a of high street. There's a subdivision off of 271 high street. Uh, there's gonna be nine new residence homes in there. Um, the name of the street that we picked is Birch Hill Lane. 
and you have a resolution coming for you for the first reading again tonight. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Further reports to special committees. Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. The uh, school board met, has met twice since our last meeting on August 15th and August 29th. And the items of most concern to the councillors here are um, a report that was given by the business administrator uh, as their books are closing, like the city's books are closing for the last fiscal year. Uh, they are reporting an unaudited amount of uh, money that was allocated for expenses that has not been spent of $225,000 plus unanticipated revenues of some $400,000 uh, resulting in $600,000 coming back. In addition to that, um, they've been advised that they will be receiving additional adequacy aid money for the current fiscal year, 2324, uh, over what was budgeted of about $1.6 million. Um, that's good news. Um, and the, uh, their finance committee uh, is meeting now to figure out what kind of requests they want to make from us to spend some of that money. Um, so that's, kind of, that's why it was not discussed on the finance committee uh, agenda that Council Witham reported on because they're still in the process of identifying what that ask is going to look like. So they were not prepared to come to us with any recommendations at this point. Uh, so in total, that's, you know, that's $2.2 million that they feel they have available to spend on projects that uh, they didn't have before. And uh, that certainly will undergo some discussion before anything happens with that. So. That's uh, that's the bulk of what happened over the last two meetings with them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further reports to special committees. Councillor Austin. Councillor Austin. Sorry, Councillor Girding. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna switch my brain when I go this way. <laughs> it's twice um, tonight. I just had a quick update from the Mayor's Commission on Cultural Ethnicity and the Arts. We are eyeing uh, September 20th at 4:30. As long as that's within our two-week timeline, right? We're good. Our deadline's the 25th, so that's perfect. okay. Perfect. So, um, <laughs> just make it a yeah, yeah. Make it a very productive. Meeting, <laughs> we certainly can. Um, and so, please, um, you'll be getting an email just to confirm soon, and I'll confirm with the other members to make sure that works for folks. But that's where we're looking at. So, just wanted folks to know. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor. Further reports of special committees, Council Cameron. Just in case anybody didn't know, we are canceling the eyes on 30 for this month due to the fire station open house as well as the housing authority. We thought it was important to go to that. We will reconvene in October. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further reports to special committees. Any further reports to special committees? None being so, City Manager. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of Council, a few comments that were included in the meeting packet for this evening's meeting. Under the City Manager's Report, Resolution 924, regarding the uh, City Manager being authorized to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Homeland Security for assistance the Firefighters Grant for the purchase of technical rescue equipment. Both the Public Safety and Finance Committee uh, pretty much cover this in totality. Uh, I, I would also include my thanks, as I did at the meeting, I believe, um, to Chief Kremlinger for his work and his staff's work on all these grants that have occurred over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, our city staff compliments to all our city staff, including uh, Scott, and to some degree I help out when we, uh, when we need help from finance or from, from myself. Uh, we do plan to take the city's match out of this fiscal year's fire department operating budget. In regards to um, resolution 1024, acceptance of Sunningdale Drive, Firefly Circle, Cattail Circle and Luna Circle as City Public Rights of Way. I provided you comp uh, copies of uh, documents, including our, our City Engineer certification that the roads were built to city specifications, a petition from 12 month LLC Joseph Felzoni for Council to accept the roads, as well as a deed of the roads and maps of the roads. Uh, moving on to other. Vote to approve the request of Unitil for waiver of Chapter 13D, Noise Nuisance Control, to allow nighttime construction from September 10th through the 15th on Blackwater Road in the intersection of Blackwater and High Street. This proposed nighttime work is necessary 
uh, they feel and staff feels in order to tie in new gas lines with minimal disruption to the road intersection. I provided you a copy of the ordinance that you'll be waiving, a letter from Unit 2 with the proposed traffic control plan, which the police department, specifically Captain Duval, has re reviewed and has approved. I'll jump down to informational items. Uh, since the other items were covered by the finance chair, uh, replacement of residential water meters. The city has contracted with Hydro Utilities of Westford, Mass., to replace residential water meters throughout the city. This is a budgeted item that was approved by council. The project is expected to start this fall. Property owners will be contacted to schedule an appointment with the contractor to remove the old meter and place it with the new meter. Homes recently constructed will not require a new meter and will not be contacted to schedule such appointment. Contractors will also, at that time, be inspecting water connections to see if any lead water components are present through a state program and grant. In the event there's evidence of lead water components, property owners will be notified. And I'll just add on um, my thanks uh, in the Public Safety Committee accepting uh, Chief Macklin's and my joint uh, recommendation to create a new police sergeant position. We just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and weren't surprised when next year's budget is created. So thank you, uh, Public Safety Committee Manners and all city councilors. And that concludes my uh, report, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nomination appointments and elections. Under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with council rules 17 appointments, the following, are being, following is being brought forward this evening for a confirmation vote. Amy LaBelle for reappointment as the Ward 3 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in June 2028. What are the wishes of the Council? Councilor Gerding. Move to accept the nominee. Councilor Gerding moves that the nominee be so far as confirmed, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor of the confirmation of the nominee, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the nominee is so far as, as confirmed. Also under nomination appointments and elections, the following is being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Allison Vesser for appointment as a member of the Cemetery Board of Trustees with a term to expire in 2028. Council Witham. I'd like to move to suspend council rules to vote on the, vote on the nominee this evening. Thank council Witham moves the city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow the nominee to be voted on this evening. Seconded by Councilor Cameron. D discussion. None being so, all those in favor of the, all those in favor of suspension of council rules, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And city council <coughs> rules are so far as suspended. Before the council this evening for appointment is Allison Vesser for appointment as a member of the Cemetery Board of Trustees with a term to expire in September 2028. What are the wishes of the council? Council Gerding. I move to accept the nominee. Council Gerding moves that the nominee be so far as confirmed, seconded by Councillor Cameron. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor of the confirmation of the nominee, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the nominee is so far as confirmed. Uh, also this evening, under the mayor's report, I did list to you uh, several appointments to the uh, Community Power Coalition. Those will move forward. Again, anyone else interested in serving, please contact the mayor's office. Brings us to agenda item number 14, which is items which have been laid upon the table. We have no items placed upon the table. Brings us to agenda item number 15, which is unfinished business. We have no unfinished business this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 16, which is new business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 924. Resolution number 924, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Homeland Security for an assistance to firefighters grant for the purchase of technical rescue equipment, September 5, 2023. Whereas the city of Summersworth has applied for an assistance to firefighters grant through the Department of Homeland Security. And whereas the city of Summersworth has received notification of an assistance to firefighters grant award in the amount of $47,619, which represents 95% of the project cost. And whereas the grant will allow the city of Summersworth to purchase technical rescue equipment for the fire department and explanation of total project grant breakdown, assistance to firefighters grant, $47,619, city match, 2,381, sorry, $2,381, total purchase cost, $50,000. Whereas the Public Safety Committee and the Finance Committee reviewed and supports entering into this grant agreement for the purchase of technical rescue equipment for the fire department. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to execute any documents and agreements necessary for the grant's execution and take any and all other such actions relative to this grant determined to be in the best interest of the City. 
sponsored by counselors Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, Nancy Cameron, Dennis Messier, David A. Witham, Don Austin, Matt Girding, Robert Gibson, approved city attorney. Councilor Pepin. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to have a second reading on resolution 924. Councilor Pepin moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a second reading on resolution 924 this evening, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion. None being so. All those in favor of waiving council rules, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it in city council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 924. Resolution number 924, to authorize the city manager to enter into, enter into a grant agreement with the Department of Homeland Security for an assistance to firefighters grant for the purchase of technical rescue equipment. Resolution 924, having been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on resolution 924. Councilor Pepin. First adoption. Councilor Pepin moves that resolution 924 be so far as adopted, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 924, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 924 is adopted. Councilor Mishu. Yes, I was wondering if I could have my name added to as a sponsor, please. Without objection, we'll add your name. Thank you. Without objection. Thank you, Chair. Chair recognizes the clerk for first reading on resolution 1024. Resolution number 1024, to accept Sunningdale Drive, Firefly Circle, Cattail Circle, and Luna Circle as public rights of way, September 5th, 2023. Whereas the City of Summersworth Planning Board approved a certain subdivision known as Subdivision Plan for the Villages at Sunningdale Subdivision off Stackpole Road and Green Street, Summersworth, New Hampshire, Tax Map 19, Lot 1, and Tax Map 20, Lot 5, formerly known as Tax Map F9, Lots 19-1 and 20-5. Final plan signed April 16th, 2014, revised on December 13th, 2013, prepared by Set Survey, recorded as plan number 109-014 through 109-022 at the Stratford County Registry of Deeds and the roadway was to be accepted by the City of Summersworth. And whereas the City Council named Sunningdale Drive and Fly Firefly Circle as streets by resolution number 22-17 on December 5th, 2016, and whereas the City Council named Cattail Circle and Luna Circle as streets by resolution number 31-19, on February 4th, 2019. And whereas the roads known as Sunningdale Drive, Firefly Circle, Cattail Circle, Luna Circle has been constructed to the satisfaction of the city. And whereas the following conditions ap apply, a two year maintenance surety bond in the amount of $234,000 is provided acceptable to the city, a deed to the road as well as all needed public utility easements are provided to the city. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to accept and record deeds to Sunningdale Drive, Firefly Circle, Cattail Circle, and Luna Circle, and said ways are hereby accepted as public rights of way. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, Nancy Cameron, Don Austin, Dennis Messier. Approved City Attorney. Resolution 1024 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 1124. Resolution number 1124, naming Golden Road and Corso Drive and assigning addresses if required. September 5th, 2023. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the following roads be named and addresses assigned if required. Name Golden Road and Corso Drive. Explanations. One. Name suggested by developer of the Bernier Street subdivision and approved by the planning board in April 2022. Two, the E911 street name and address committee recommended and approved the city street, street names at their August 8, 2023 committee meeting. Three, the street name is required to be in compliance with E911 standards. State E911 officials concurred that the proposed street name is in compliance with E911 standards. Four, Golden Road and Corso Drive are private roads. Five, developer is required to install a street sign and a private way sign per city condition of name acceptance. Be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth <coughs> that this action is in accordance with RSA 231 133, 
RSA 231-133-A, RSA 106-A, State of New Hampshire, Department of Safety, Division of Emergency Communications, Addressing Standards, and City of Summersworth Ordinance Chapter 19, Section 23, sponsored by Councillor Martin Pepin, approved City Attorney. Resolution 1124 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Your Honor, with regard to the next resolution 1224, I'd like to move to suspend rules to read by title only where it is nearly identical. Council with a moves that City Council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a first reading on resolution 1224 by title only, seconded by Councillor Pepin. The question before the Council is on suspension of Council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, note the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and City Council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 1224 by title only. Resolution number 1224, naming Birch Hill Lane and assigning addresses if required. Resolution 1224 remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Brings us to uh, items under other, other B we've already, uh, we've already taken care of. That brings us to item other A, a vote to approve the request by Unitel for a waiver of chapter 13D noise slash nuisance control to allow nighttime construction from September 10th through September 15th, 2023 on Blackwater Road in the intersection of Blackwater at High Street. The vote will be on to approve the request. Discussion. Council Witham. Thank you. Uh, I think this makes all the sense in the world. That's a tremendously busy intersection. I'm not sure how you would be out and around there uh, doing it during the day. Uh, I did run into Director Babinski uh, at finance meeting last week, and I said, would that not be an opportune time to take care of the catch basin that's problematic yes. and do it at the same time? It's my understanding that that catch basin requires more work than can be done in uh, a couple of nights, but if there were a way to coordinate that, that would seem to make some sense, but I don't know if it can be. So I just offer that up, but I'm in full support of the, uh, the vote here. Question for the council to vote to approve the request by Unitel for a waiver of Chapter 13D noise slash nu nu <coughs> nuisance. I don't know why I can't say that this evening. Control. Further discussion, Councilor Vincent. Yeah, I'm in full support also. Um, just what is the times? Do we, do we have the time? I can't remember off the top of my head, just so the public will know. Do, 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 do. What is the hours of 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. from Sunday, September 10th through Friday, September 15th? That is correct, and you scored double jeopardy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. The question before the council is a vote to approve the request by Unitel for a waiver of Chapter 13D noise and nuisance control. Further discussion. Got it on the third time. All those in favor, please. A vote will be to approve. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the request is approved. Brings us to other under C, a vote to readopt the City of Summersworth investment policy. Uh, the vote will be to readopt the investment policy. Discussion. None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the City of Summersworth in investment policy is readopted. Brings us to agenda item number 17, which is closing comments by visitors. Any closing comments by visitors? Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Any closing comments by visitors this evening? None being so. Brings us on to agenda item number Jeez, I am so glad we're at the end of the agenda. I cannot talk tonight. Brings us to agenda item number 18, closing comments by council members. And we'll start with Ward 1 Councilor, Councilor Pepin. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a reminder, elections are coming up. People are going to be filing. Uh, I will be running for this, for this seat uh, next term. Uh, but it's open for anybody that wants, wants to put their name in. Uh, we're all open, so... Um, that's that. Uh, second thing, I forgot to bring this up at the public safety meeting, but when we were having the E91 committee, uh, I was blocked in traffic because they were putting the gas lines through. So I asked about the generator for the police department. And evidently, they have a diesel engine. I don't know if that could be converted over into gas or whatever. So I was wondering if staff could possibly look and see if it could be some type of conversion that could possibly be done or if we need to replace it in the future, uh, have it on the have it on the wish list or whatever um, so uh, we can get rid of contaminated 
we, we need diesel fuel to run it so that it gives us one less fuel problem that we'll probably have down the road. So, and that's all I have tonight. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 2, Councilor. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 3, Councilor. Councilor Gibson. I refuse to answer. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Ward 4, Councilor. Councilor Austin. Oh, my God. I used to think Councilor Dumont was hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> just a quick comment. I've been seeing a lot of um, negativity on social media websites, a number of different right, websites about Summersworth, and that most of it is based on old data and old information and people who just continue to hold a grudge, quite frankly. Um, I think it's important to recognize that um, the city has uh, made dramatic improvements over the last decade. Uh, through the guidance of our current mayor and, and the councils uh, that have served. And I think uh, before people make judgments based on old information, I think you ought to come and take a look and talk to people who live here and, and get a feel for what the community is really like. Uh, we heard some testimony tonight about uh, the good quality service that our police department provides. And that's one example of many that we could all uh, put our hands around uh, if we chose to do that. So uh, I think Summersworth is a great place to live. Uh, I think that this council con continues to work on the issues that we know we have around us, but I think that uh, when you compare to decades ago, I think that there's no comparison. We are uh, a community on the move. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Ward 5, Councillor. Councillor Mishu. Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Councilor. Bring us, bringing us to the at-large side, at-large, Councilor. Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, request of Councilor Pepin and public safety, no need to rush, but at your next meeting, I, I would appreciate at least a conversation with, uh, with Chief Macklin uh, around uh, electric vehicles, so e-bikes, e-scooters, uh, things of this nature. They have become uh, quite prevalent in the area. Uh, I was talking with a resident of the community who was struck by an e-scooter, I think it was, uh, on Kilda Street a couple of weeks ago. Uh, apparently the person fell down, they got out of their car, they were mortified. Apparently they were just driving and the scooter ran into them. Uh, the person then up and got on the scooter and left. Uh, and there was damage to the car. I don't know if that was reported to the PD or not, but that is one example. Uh, I, I do know, and uh, for any of you out there that are watching that own these uh, pieces of equipment, uh, they are difficult to insure. They're not insured under your automobile policy, and your homeowner's policy typically excludes them because it's a motorized vehicle. So if they create an accident that generates liability, oftentimes it's, you might as well consider it an uninsured motorist. And if you've driven around the city and have seen these things at day or even at night, they travel at high rates of speeds, often don't obey rules of the road, might even be on sidewalks. And the only reason I'm asking to bring it up at the public safety meeting, is there any need for us to develop ordinances here in the city to better regulate this? Uh, for example, prohibiting them on sidewalks or things of that nature. So I don't know all of the legalities around that, but if there could be at least a conversation with uh, our police chief, that would be uh, terrific. Uh, funny Councillor Austin, I was going to comment on some of the negativity as well. I read one of those articles and my blood pressure, I'm sure, was up. There was a picture of downtown Summersworth, like circa 1980, uh, and uh, talked about all these things that aren't true anymore, perhaps were at one point in time. But to the point made by Councillor Austin, uh, the city has invested millions, tens of millions in infrastructure, uh, wastewater, water, roads, sidewalks, image, uh, and many of the things that they were grousing about in these articles uh, were fictitious, at least in terms of the current uh, time. So uh, things have changed for the better uh, due to the will of council uh, and the stewardship of the mayor. Uh, and couldn't agree more, Councillor Austin, that those that write those articles deserve to get in their car and come drive here and take a look. So thank you. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Gerding. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, all I have to say is happy first week of school. Uh, it was a great 
uh, first week, last week we had three days uh, with kids, a week of staff, um, and it was awesome. I cannot uh, say anything, you know, negative about how it went. It was awesome. So um, that's all I have, honestly, nothing else. Thanks. Thank you, Counselor. At large, Counselor, Counselor Cameron. Thank you, Anna. I am very excited to hear about the bridges for Will and Pond, and hopefully that will come to fruition soon because it is very important out there to have those redone, so I'm very excited about that. So thank you. I hope to see everybody at the open house for the fire department and also for the housing authority with all these great strive, strides we've been making. Again, I've saw some of those negative comments too. Look around, people. You don't know what you're talking about. And on a good note, and talking about Riverside Rest Home, my daughter-in-law works there, and Fenway had the opportunity to go there to meet some, meet some residents today as a little therapy, and they loved him. I'm glad he behaved himself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Counselor. At large, Counselor. Counselor Messier. Thank you, sir. Uh, a couple of minor things. Um, I received an email of thank you for the larger flag at the former armory. So just to let Bob or whoever, however that got there, thank you. There's a couple of residents that are happy. Uh, Forest Great Glade Cemetery, grass isn't mowed, it's high. Some of the trees are still damaged from winter time. I apologize, and the fence needs painting. I apologize, but I drive by that living on Cemetery Road, and I mean, don't they, isn't there some pituitary, or whatever you call it, care? Can we get something done? Never mind the pothole on West High Street going down the hill. And on a positive note, Unitil and their contractor, I must say, they do good work, and good work in the sense of the final detail for the patching of hot top, uh, loam, and things of that nature. So I'd like to thank Unitil and their contractors for that. Uh, and I'll leave it as that. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Counselor Girding moves at the City Council is standing adjournment, seconded by Counselor Mishu. The question for the Council is on adjournment. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes aye. appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the City Council stands adjourned. Aye.